A couple of days ago, I stumbled across this video by JJ McCullough about the most famous pictures across the world. And it got me thinking, what would be the most famous pictures from the Balkans? So naturally, I decided to ask you, my dear viewers, what would be some of the most iconic historical photographs from your countries? And here are some of the best ones you guys gave me. Starting off with Albania, we have a photo of an 1858 anti-Ottoman fighter. The man in the photo is Hamza Bey Kazazi, who was a famous 19th century Albanian leader. Although he was originally an army leader within the Ottoman military, in 1835 Kazazi took up arms against the Ottomans during the Albanian uprising of 1835 in Shkoder. During this time, much like the rest of the Balkans, Ottoman rule was becoming ever more unpopular and much of the Albanian nobility in the region was losing power and many of the soldiers and leaders were left unpaid by the state while at the same time, taxes were still being increased. As the American War of Independence can attest, tax increases almost never backfire. So ultimately, under the leadership of Hamza Kazazi, the Albanians revolted against the Turks and saw moderate success as they were able to achieve many of their goals, one of them being to remove the unpopular Ottoman governor within Albania at the time. Thus, the revolt in the picture of Kazazi became a staple in Albania's history. Another one my Albanian viewers suggested was also the 1912 siege of Shkoder. In this picture, we can see over a dozen Albanian soldiers in a defensive position holding their rifles and aiming at supposedly oncoming invaders. The photo was taken during the First Mental Asylum Revolt, also known better academically as uh, the First Balkan War, in which Serbia, Montenegro, Greece, and Bulgaria joined forces and invaded the Ottoman Empire in the efforts to seize their historical territories and do a little bit of trolling. The city of Shkoder, which is located in the north of Albania, was at the time claimed by Montenegro as its rightful historical lands, as in medieval times the city served as the capital of the medieval Montenegrin state of Zeta. The city was then besieged by Montenegrins and Serbians, however the invaders faced fierce resistance from the defending Albanians. In the end, the city fell to the Montenegrins and Serbs, but ultimately the great powers at the time opposed the annexation of the city by Montenegro, and soon after the Kingdom of Albania was formed, independent from the Ottomans and in full control of Škoder. Of course, when we talk about Bosnia, there is no other event in its recent history that defined it more than the Bosnian War in the 90s. As such, some of the most famous pictures that come from the country are in relation to this war. One of the most recognizable pictures from this conflict is a picture from the Siege of Sarajevo, where civilians and Bosnian soldiers come under fire from a Serbian sniper. The worst of the siege happened during the years of 1992 and 1993. During this time, the use of snipers was extremely prevalent as the Serbian army took up positions throughout the city and more often than not, besides opening fire on military personnel, also fired at civilians. As such, throughout the city one could find signs written by the populace saying watch out sniper which became a slogan in itself defining Sarajevo. The main street of the city in particular was so overwhelmed with sniper fire that it garnered the name Sniper Alley. If you're ever in Bosnia you can still see these signs in museums and sometimes even find them in antique shops too. During the same conflict another symbolic photo is the picture of the destroyed Mostar Bridge. The Mostar Bridge was the most symbolic structure of the city of Mostar. It was built in the mid-16th century by Suleiman the Magnificent, meant to connect the Croat and Bosnian parts of the city to foster trade and improve administration. After its construction, it became one of the best examples of Islamic Balkan architecture. During the Bosnian War in 1993, the Croatian army shelled and destroyed the centuries-old monument as the Bosnian army was using it as a supply line for its army. Alongside this being a huge tragedy and the loss of a cultural good. This event was also symbolic in a way that symbolized the destruction of the Bosnian and Croatian century old ties. After the end of the war the bridge was rebuilt and became a UNESCO site in 2005. For Bulgaria we once again go back into the 19th century as a lot of you submitted this photo. The man in the uniform holding in one hand his gun and in the other a sword is one of Bulgaria's most significant national heroes, Vasil Levski. Throughout the mid 19th century Levski became the founder and leader of the IRO, which was the Bulgarian revolutionary movement that seeked to liberate Bulgaria from the claws of everyone's favorite empire, the Ottomans. Throughout his life, he organized a secret network of committees throughout Bulgaria that would rise up against the Ottomans and make Bulgaria an independent state. Eventually, the Ottomans caught up to him and were able to capture and execute him. But although they killed a the man, they weren't able to kill the idea. 
Today, you can find a variety of monuments and streets throughout Bulgaria dedicated to him. Another picture you suggested was that of the 1990 nationwide student protests in Bulgaria. So, as you know, throughout much of the second part of the 20th century, the Balkans were economically literate and uh, functioned as communist states. I know, pretty cringe. Nevertheless, over the years, economic mismanagement and the political situation worsened throughout Bulgaria and the people decided they wanted a change of system. As such, throughout the early 90s, the country went through significant changes such as the state council dissolving and the country going bankrupt. This sparked mass protests led by Bulgarian students all over the country that ultimately ended in Bulgaria adopting capitalism and renaming itself into the Republic of Bulgaria from the People's Republic of Bulgaria. For Croatia, to no one's surprise, many of the pictures you guys sent me were also regarding the Yugoslav Wars, more specifically the Croatian War of Independence. The first picture is this of the shelled water tower in Vukovar. Originally the water tower was built in the 60s and shortly became one of the defining buildings of the city. During the war Vukovar became the site of some of the fiercest fighting in the entire conflict as the city would be shelled with up to 12,000 shells daily and eventually the city was completely destroyed. The tower itself was a common target and it is estimated that it was hit over 600 times. After the war, the water tower was converted into a museum and restaurant, and to many Croatians, it serves as a symbol of their perseverance and suffering the city went through in the 90s. The next one is a photo of a sculpture where a red Yugoslav made Fiat, known as Ficha, is going over a military tank. This too is a reference to the Croatian War of Independence. In 1991, the Yugoslav army invaded the city of Osijek. During the invasion, one of the locals protested by parking his car in the middle of the road in an attempt to prevent the tanks from going further. The tanks, as you can imagine, slammed into the car and completely obliterated it into pieces. 20 years after this event, the monument to the humble Fica was unveiled in the city, which is meant to represent the resistance and ultimately victory within the war. For Greece, the number one picture y'all suggested was that of a tank coming into a university campus. To add a bit of context, in 1967, Greece had a coup staged by a military junta, which made Greece into a right-wing military dictatorship. During this time, differing political expressions and opinions were extremely cracked down on, and many oppositionary party members and intellectuals were arrested and or executed. At the same time, heavy media censorship was implemented, banning many books, films, music, long hair on men, and miniskirts. Because, God forbid, the people have a little bit of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Political prisoners were subjugated to torture and execution, and many were placed in specialized detention centers. Opposition to the junta, as you can imagine, grew, and one of its culminations was the Athens Polytechnic Uprising. During the uprising, the students occupied the campus and barricaded themselves inside, calling for the end of the junta occupation. As you can imagine, the junta sent in the armed forces and violently dismembered the protest. This eventually brought in more people to the anti-junta cause, which led to their eventual fall one year later in 1974. Today, the date of the uprising, the 17th of November, is a national holiday in Greece where the effort of the students who fought against authoritarianism for liberty is commemorated each year. When it comes to Hungary, one of the most, if not the most significant events in its 20th century history was the Hungarian Revolution of 1956. As such, a lot of you submitted many photos from this event. One of the most famous photos from this revolution is the picture of the Hungarian people standing and holding their flag over a Soviet tank. Much like many of the other countries in this region, communism was forced onto the people. Over the years, the living standard in the country became worse year by year as Hungary was forced to export its natural resources and reparations to the Soviet Union, and the political administration was severely corrupt. Because of this, in 1956, the Hungarian people revolted. As the Hungarian government was overrun by dissenters, the USSR sent in the army into the country to quench the rebellion. However, in the first wave, the people prevailed over the Soviets, which brought a glimmer of hope and with it, this photo. During this event, uh, this other picture was also taken, where in the beginning of the revolution, the students and populace rushed to the massive statue of Stalin in the center of the city and tore it down. On it, you can see a decapitated head of Braun Stalin, which is only second in pictures of fallen dictator statues, only behind Saddam Hussein. Later on within the protest, some marked it with the letters WC, showing their true thoughts on Stalin and communism. Now, 
I'm sure this next one will ruffle a lot of feathers, uh, especially some Bulgarian ones. But hey, this is unavoidable when talking about Macedonia and uh, engagement is engagement. The picture most of you from Macedonia suggested was a portrait from Macedonian and Bulgarian national hero, Goce Delchev. Much like Vasilevsky, Delchev too was an anti-Ottoman revolutionary. He was the founder and leader of the IMRO, the International Macedonian Revolutionary Organization, who aimed to get autonomy from the Ottoman Empire. Today, although he was seen as a freedom fighter and someone who stood up against Ottoman tyranny, he is also considered quite controversial due to his intentions and origin being disputed by both Bulgaria and Macedonia. Many Bulgarians claim that Delchev was an ethnic Bulgarian and that his final goal was was for Macedonia to join with an independent Bulgaria. While many Macedonians refute this and claim that he was an ethnic Macedonian who paved the way for Macedonian nationalism and his stances on Macedonian autonomy is highly open to interpretation. The next one a lot of you suggested is the album cover of pop singer Toshe Proeski. Now, because I'm not a huge listener of Toshe, I didn't know which one to pick, so if I picked the wrong one, imagine I didn't. <laughs> in the late 90s and early 2000s, in the ex-territories of Yugoslavia, Proeski was one of the most popular and beloved singers and songwriters from the region. Despite Yugoslavia falling apart, his music was something that connected everyone in the region as it was really difficult to find someone who generally didn't like his stuff. He was such a huge hit, in fact, that many even dubbed him the Elvis Presley of the Balkans. Unfortunately, his legacy was short-lived as his life came tragically to an end in a car crash in Croatia. Next up, we have Romania. Although Romania and Hungary are known throughout the continent as having a long-lasting rivalry, to say the least, much like Hungary, Romania's most influential pictures stem from their own revolution. One of the most famous pictures of this event is this one, where one of the revolutionaries is holding the Romanian flag in front of a crowd with a big hole in it. Now, if you've been a long-time viewer of this channel, you should know that the time of communism in Romania was an absolutely devastating period for its people and the country. The country became the second poorest in Europe after Albania, food shortages were prevalent and imposed by the dictatorial power couple, the Ceausescus, who also ruled the country with an iron fist in a similar fashion to North Korea. And as we all know the state North Korea is in today, you can only imagine how bad things were. In 1989, the people had enough of it and rebelled against the government with much of the police and military joining them. Throughout the revolution, one of the main symbols was that of the Romanian flag, which essentially just had a socialist coat of arms cut out of it, which was inspired by the Hungarian flag in its 1956 revolution that also did this with their coat of arms. During the same time, another famous picture came about which showcases a bunch of people riding on top of a military truck with a cutout flag. Another lesser known picture from Romania's history is a bit more recent and very much alive in the memory of modern day Romanians, which is the photo taken during the Club Collective protests. In 2015, Romania saw one of the largest mass protests ever to hit the country after a tragedy at a nightclub in Bucharest where 64 people lost their lives and another 186 were injured. Essentially, these deaths were blamed on the prevalent corruption within the Romanian government as the club clearly didn't meet safety requirements and the hospitals who had to treat the victims were under-equipped. During the tragedy, many EU countries offered to send additional medical experts and equipment to help out the overwhelmed hospitals in Romania. However, the Romanian government at the time lied and claimed it had things under control and there was no shortages of medical equipment nor staff, which subsequently caused enormous outrage throughout the country and protests all over Romania flared up. After which, massive reforms were passed throughout the country, which many see as a turning point in Romanian modern day politics. Now, for Serbia, there is no lack of historic pictures for the Yugoslav wars, but I feel one of the most impactful pictures is the one taken after the 90s, where a huge group of people is storming the parliament, and you can also see a bulldozer carrying several people and a Chetnik flag as well. The story behind this one is that, as you know, throughout the 90s, Serbia was involved in a series of civil wars, which ended up in the breakup of Yugoslavia. During the 90s, Serbia was led by Slobodan Milosevic, whose rule over time became known for its authoritarianism, suppression of civil rights and minorities, and numerous political blunders that today both extremists and moderates on each side of the political spectrum in Serbia consider him a failure for their own reasons. In the year 2000, during the elections, it was confirmed that Milosevic was taking part in election fraud, which led to mass protests and strikes across the country. 
This continued to escalate as over the next couple of days, people across the country started to congregate in Belgrade, where they later stormed the parliament and some unimaginably based guys in a bulldozer stormed into the national TV station, an institution which was seen as Milosevic's propaganda machine. This event came to be known as the October 5th Revolution or the Bulldozer Revolution. At the end, Milosevic was detained by the police and later on given to The Hague to stand trial for war crimes, where he subsequently died awaiting trial. Another interesting photo from this time period is also the assassination of Serbia's first prime minister, Zoran Djindjic. After the overthrow of Milosevic, Serbia was in a particularly fragile political state and had a serious problem with organized crime and mafia syndicates. Nevertheless, one of the most impactful political figures of the time was Djindjic, who shortly came to office after the revolution. In his short career, he advocated for democratic and European values, and under him, Serbia passed a lot of reforms adopting human rights laws, laws from the Council of Europe, and he was very much in support of working with the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. Alongside this, he also gave one of the biggest bangers of a speech. Nema spavanja. Ne možete vi da, da budete svetski provacija da spavate. Spavate 5-6 sati, šta, šta više treba da spavate? Spavat ćete kad budete u penziji. Penzioneri mogu da spavaju. Ako niste u penziji, nemojte da spavate. Although he had many critics, he also had many supporters and was generally a loved figure in Serbia as he symbolized a new age of democratization. Unfortunately, in 2003, while in office, he was shot, supposedly by a member of the mafia. In the picture captured by a security camera, his car can be seen being swarmed with security trying to save Jinjic but to no avail. After his death, a state of emergency was declared nationwide, as well as Operation Sabre, which aimed to crack down on organized crime and arrest hundreds of people linked to the Mafia. Okay, so for this segment, if you consider Kosovo a country, imagine them referring to it as such, and if you're a staunch Serbian nationalist, imagine that this is just another entry for Serbia, because Serbia is the greatest country on earth that deserves an additional part. Bože pravde ti što spase od propasti do sad nas. So, for the Albanians from Kosovo, one of the most iconic historical photos would be this group photo of a bunch of men dressed in traditional Albanian clothing. It is a picture of some of the delegates from the League of Prizren. The League of Prizren, also known as the Albanian League, is the first Albanian nationalist organization that was formed in 1878 after one of the many Russo-Turkish wars. As the Ottoman Empire had its ass handed to it by the Russians, the Ottoman Empire was forced to give up some of its territories to the newly independent Balkan countries such as Serbia, Montenegro and Greece. As such, territories that had sizable and in some cases majority Albanian populations were intended to be partitioned. Because of this, the League of Prizren was formed whose goal was to prevent this from happening via political and military means. Its efforts were ultimately unsuccessful and the League was forced to cede territory to Montenegro. Afterwards, the League aimed to gain autonomy from the Ottomans, which uh, resulted in the Ottoman army marching into the Albanian populated lands and crushing the League. A more recent photo from here would be this one of a man crying and holding a picture of his two sons. As you can guess, this was taken during the 1999 Kosovo War, which was one of the most brutal wars in Europe after World War II. The war came about due to Serbian suppression of Albanian minority rights, which prompted Albanian rebels to rise and fight to secede from Serbia. During the conflict, it is estimated that over a million Kosovo Albanians were displaced due to the conflict, and it was not uncommon for civilians to be targeted by military personnel on both sides. Coming back to the photograph, the man in it is Mustafa Jaya, who was separated from his family in the city of Mitrovica. When the photograph was taken, he was searching for his sons that were missing. Luckily, later on, they were found alive and well, and Jaya's family survived the war. While the war in Kosovo impacted the Albanians there disproportionately, it doesn't mean that Serbia didn't have its own victims and losses. As such, one of the most recognizable photographs for the Serbs in this conflict is this one, where a man is seen on top of a Serbian Orthodox church ripping off its cross. 
It was taken as a screenshot from a video recorded in 2004 during the pogrom against the Serbs. In March of that year, violence erupted once more in the city of Mitrovica after the local Kosovo Albanian media falsely reported that the three Albanian boys had drowned in the Ibar River due to being chased by a group of Serbs. Because of this, mass unrest and violence engulfed the city. As a result, over 4,000 Serbs were expelled, over 900 houses and 35 Orthodox churches were desecrated and destroyed. Because of this event, the UN and UNESCO were prompted to put many Serbian churches onto the endangered cultural heritage list and even deploy K4 troops to guard them, many of whom are still stationed there to this day. Moving on to everybody's favorite femboy state, the photograph suggested by viewers from Slovenia is that of this mass crowd. The picture depicts the 1918 proclamation of the state of Slovenes, Croats and Serbs on one of Ljubljana's most popular spots. Congress Square. After the Central Powers were defeated in World War I, the Entente had the pleasure to carve up the losers' territories. As the territory of Austria-Hungary was extremely ethnically diverse, many of its minorities wished to live in their own states. At the same time, the idea of pan-Slavic nationalism was also greatly taking hold with the Empire's Slavic population. As such, after the war was concluded, the state of Slovenes, Croats and Serbs was born. Although it proclaimed independence, it was internationally unrecognized and roughly a month after its secession, it joined the Kingdom of Serbia and the Kingdom of Montenegro to form the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes, which later on was renamed the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. Another picture you guys suggested was also this one, showcasing Yugoslav T-55 tanks at a petrol station near an Italian border post. Much like the majority of the photos from the ex-Yugoslav republics, this one too was taken during the Yugoslav wars. Often overlooked, Slovenia was also a participant in the wars as well. After Croatia declared independence from Yugoslavia, Slovenia followed. This then prompted the Yugoslav army to invade the Republic. Fighting ensued for the next 10 days and resulted in 64 deaths and over 300 wounded. Ultimately, as Slovenia had a low Serb population, the Yugoslav army withdrew from the country and it was allowed to secede with much less pain compared to what followed in Croatia and Bosnia. So yeah, there you have it folks. That would be some of the most famous pictures from each country in the Balkans. Let me know which one was your favorite and which other photos you'd suggest for this list. Also, don't forget to click that subscribe button and become a member like these wonderful people. If you wish to support me in another way, go to theironicshop.com and get yourself one of my shirts or board games. As always, my name is Janos and you've watched Living Ironically in Europe. Hey, hey, why are you